Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we are going to be talking about Marvel Snap. If you haven't played Marvel Snap, what the heck are you doing? You need to download it on your phone or your PC and play the game. It is one of the best games I've ever played in the past year. I'm being dead serious. I'm playing it nonstop. If I'm at the toilet, I'm playing it. If I'm walking around, playing it. If I'm trying to talk to people, I'm still playing it. Like it's just that simple. It is one of the most addicting games I've ever played and it's free. It is 100% free. Now there are add-ons such as season passes, which I'm going to be talking about in this video and that is completely optional. But today we're going to be talking about some patches, some balance updates, and I'm going to talk about the latest season pass and give you my opinion on if it's worth it or not. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, over here on the Marvel Snap website, we have the latest updates. It started from August 8th, and then we had a balance update on the 17th. So let's go ahead and talk about the patch notes, then we'll go over to the balance updates, and then I'll give you all my opinion on the season pass. Now these patch notes were open on August 8th. Here's some general updates. There's a new feature such as multi upgrade. If you have enough resources, multi upgrade allows you to select the quality you'd like to target and tap the upgrade button once to directly skip to that quality level. So basically they're saying save your thumbs and save some time, which I think is really helpful. Uh, not, you know, not gonna lie, you know, you press the thumb, you just keep upgrading over and over again, it is a little bit time consuming. So if you have everything you need automatically to upgrade to infinity, you can do that. There is a new feature as well where you can upgrade with gold. If you are short on credits and or boosters but still want to upgrade a card, you can now upgrade your cards with gold up to a limit each day. So it doesn't specify what that limit is. I just found out about this feature just by looking at this. So I have to take a look and see. I can see that being helpful though. You know, if you have some extra gold on hand and you wanna hurry up and upgrade some cards, you can do that. They also improved the avatar selection flow. Tapping on the avatar on the main menu will now bring up the avatar select screen, allowing you to change the current deck's avatar quickly. So that's pretty cool. When you view an upgradable card in your collection and choose not to upgrade it, it will be marked as red and will no longer increase the red dot notification count. Note this went live in our last patch, but they forgot to mention it in the patch notes. Uh, here's some balance updates. They did do an update to Cable. Uh, before, on reveal, put the bottom card of your opponent's deck in your hand. And now, on reveal, it draws the top card of your opponent's deck. So that's just a little switcheroo there. Uh, let's see, Magic. Before you can't play it on turn six, on reveal, change this location to Limbo. Now on reveal, replace this location with Limbo and it doesn't work after turn five. Then they got an update to Mr. Negative. On reveal, swap the power and cost of all cards in your deck. And now there's a gameplay change. It caps costs at a maximum of six. They also did an update to Rogue. On reveal, still an ongoing ability from a random enemy card at this location. And now the change now triggers on reveals if the copied ongoing card had one. Now the one I was most impressed with was Spider-Man. Before, his cost and power was five over four and he had an on reveal ability. Your opponent can't play cards at this location next turn. Now, that can be helpful if you wanna use this as like on turn five, if you wanna quickly block this over, that way they can't play there. That way you automatically win that side. But they did change it, now the power, the cost and power is three over five with an on reveal ability of move to another location and pull an enemy card from here to there. Now that is also helpful. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be quite as helpful as before because usually I use Spider-Man as like a last resort. Like say I'm really wanting to win this area. I would hurry up and throw Spider-Man that way they can't do it on the last play. But with this, if you have a good move deck, you know, you'll be moving moving back and forth all over the place. And that'll be pretty cool. I do appreciate the change of the cost and power uh, because the cost and power of the old one was just not as good, especially for Spider-Man being so iconic. His cost and power just really wasn't anything. Uh, they also did an upgrade to the evolved thing. Before he was had an on reveal ability, afflict a random enemy card with negative one power and you can repeat it twice more. And now you can afflict three random enemy cards here with negative one power. 
So instead of doing it to one card, you can do it with three different cards now. Now there are bug fixes as well. They said they fixed a bug that would cause mirror dimension to repeatedly morph into another mirror dimension in a loop. And then they fixed a bug that would cause players to get stuck on an old season past season, which I've never had that happen. So that's pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, and then they did some performance improvements with UI, UX bug fixes and stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the balance updates here. They did this on the 17th just the other day. They did an update to Forge. Forge had an on reveal ability that gives the next card you play plus two power. Now the next card you play plus two power. Next card you play plus two power. Next card you play plus three power. So I don't know the way they explain this. I don't know if like the next card you play you get two power and then you get it plus three power or you give one the first card plus two power and then you play again and give it plus three power. I'll have to check that out to be sure. Next up we have Shauna. She had an on reveal ability that says add a random one cost card to each location. And now they changed four over four for the cost and power to three over two. So that's pretty helpful if you are a fan of Shauna. And then they have a crystal update where uh, they changed the power and cost to three over three instead of four over four. So that's pretty simple there. Now I understand what they were talking about with Forge. So instead of giving it plus two power, they changed it to giving it plus three power. I don't, the way they listed this on the update is a little bit strange. Now we're gonna be talking about the new season and that is big in Japan. Now when I first saw this season, I was like, ugh, why are they doing another X-Men season pass? And after looking at it, uh, it does look pretty cool. It's giving me kind of like a, what's that uh gundam or whatever but they're just replacing a lot of these characters with like this robotic exosuit type skin which i think is pretty cool go ahead and read the summary for fans of x-men the marvel snap universe is about to take you on a journey to japan this month's season pass gives you the opportunity to unlock a brand new card variants avatars and card backs your journey begins near sendai japan as we introduce Dokken, the son of one of x-men's most iconic figures wolverine Dokken here it has a cost and power of three over four has a non reveal ability that adds this card here add the muramasa shard to your hand now when this is discarded or destroyed it doubles dokken's power which is pretty helpful now it can be a little bit difficult because you know say black panther if you just lay black panther down it automatically doubles the power or with thor if you have thor's hammer molinear and you throw it down it automatically doubles but you have to either discard or destroy this card to doubles double his power which i guess is pretty fine i mean if you're doing a destroy deck i can see that being helpful because you're going to be destroying shit anyways let's see they got some new characters here though you have X-23 here. See, when this is discarded or destroyed, regenerate it at a random location and you get one energy next turn. So that's pretty helpful. And it's only a one cost with two power. And then you also have Silver Samurai has an on reveal ability. Each player discards the lowest power card from their hand. I do not, I mean, I guess that would be helpful. That's a four cost with five power. I, I, I would have to see it put in effect to see how good that would be. But I mean, if you're gonna be spending a four cost card not many people are going to be having those lower cost cards anyways or lower power cards anyways they're going to be focusing on their higher power cards so we'll just have to see how well that works and then next up we have lady death strike has an on reveal ability that destroys each card here with less power than this that would be really helpful i don't know how i'd feel about it with a five cost here um, we'd have to see how that goes into effect but these higher cost cards doing something so minuscule like that, unless you're just trying to like build the power or the cost of say death or uh, null, you know, now there'll be new cards added into the spotlight cash and the token shop as well. On August 7th, Phoenix Force from last month's season pass will be in it. August 14th, Lady Deathstrike will be in it. August 21st, X-23 and August 28th, the Silver Samurai will be in there as well. That's when you can get those. Um, let's see here. We have some spotlight caches here. On August 7th, you can get Galactus, Spider-Ham, Nimrod, which it's already past that. On the 14th, you can get Lady Deathstrike, MODOK, and Stature, which I already got Stature here. And then on August 21st, we can either win Silk, X-23, or Nebula. 
I would really like to win Silk and X-23. I already have Nebula. If you don't, Nebula is incredible. She's one of my favorite cards. And then on August 28th, you can win Kitty Pride, Silver Samurai, and Spider-Man 2099, which is going to be pretty cool. I have Spider-Man 2099 and Kitty Pride. 2099 Spider-Man is awesome. Kitty Pride, I've seen a lot of people use her, but I mean, she's all right. Here we go. Brand new locations added into the game. You have the Valley of the Hand and the Yoshida base. Now, the Yoshida base at the end of the game, destroy the last card to get here. That's pretty interesting. And then Valley of the Hand, after turn five, you destroyed card, your destroyed cards revive here. So this season is going to be really focused on destroying your cards, which now I realize why people were playing Galactus decks and stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Good thing my main deck right now is a destroy deck. So now they do have some brand new variants. 40 plus new art variants coming to the game this season and Jesus Christ, I guess I'm going to go ahead and read all these. Uh, Absorbing Man by Dan Hip, Adam Warlock by Eduardo, Ant-Man by Dan Hip, Armor, Pixel Variant. All these you can go ahead and look here. I'm not going to read every single one of these, uh, but you can also look online to see what these variants actually look like as well. Here's a little sample of some of them. I like that blade variant as well and x23 looks pretty cool too then it shows here we got some bundles incoming we have a stegron mech variant bundle for 7500 gold a morbius mech bundle which i love for only 20 dollars, and you get all this that's that's not too bad of a deal for 75 dollars. that's a that is does seem a little bit steep but you do get a death variant uh of the mech which oh my god that looks really cool too and you get all this side stuff too they have a Spider-Man and Black Widow anime variant, which I find pretty cool. It's not my favorite Spider-Man variant, but it's okay. Then you have a Juggernaut mech variant here for $20. That's a pretty cool variant. Storm and Captain Marvel anime variant. And they got Daredevil, the Punisher, and Misty Knight. These variants are cool. I love that Daredevil variant right there for only $10. And then you have a Red Skull variant, which is pretty cool for $25. And then you have these variants here for Iron Man and Jane Foster for 2000 gold. That's pretty cool. Out of all these, I think the Daredevil variant is going to be really cool. And I love Death and Morbius's mech variant. Uh, you know, if you have the money to spend on those, good on you, mate. I personally do not. But if you have the money, go ahead and spend the money on that. I'm going to go ahead and list a little review here for this season. To be honest with you, I was I'm not very pleased that they're doing another x-men season pass here uh i after looking at everything all it entails because i already unlocked a mecha magneto variant which is pretty sweet i do like how they're adding like this little robotic variants to these heroes uh i can respect that the new cards seem pretty cool especially where i do a destroy deck but the thing is i mean we just had an x-men season pass last month so i feel like they could have done something a little bit different it's okay i would rate this i would grade this about a b and just leave it at that i mean have you all enjoyed these so far like these card backs that's pretty cool these little avatars and i got that magneto variant right there and those are pretty sick right there too uh, go ahead and let me know what you think about these changes in the season pass down in the comments down below and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel because I'm probably going to be doing a lot more Marvel Snap videos like this in the future. And until next time, take it easy, bubs.